Thank you, Jeff, and, and thank you all again for, for coming. Um, as, as Jeff and Rex mentioned, the meeting that we had in June was, was pulled together on an equally short time frame, but, but also was considerably smaller. Um, and one of the things that we're trying to do is, is to expand this field and, and disseminate more. We'll um, find a bigger room, hopefully one that's not quite so warm. Uh, we, we are working on that, uh, but uh, but we really do need need your advice, and I think you know a good chunk of tomorrow we'll be asking you basically you know what's the best way for us all to interact. So let's see. Um, so yes, yeah, so the the outcomes that we had an, anticipated and that I think have, have come to fruition just in the in the few months since then were, were sort of an enhanced appreciation understanding of ongoing efforts because as, as Eric and Rex mentioned there there really was was some doubt as to whether genomic medicine was sort of ready um, uh, but uh, with NIH wide we, we have uh, representatives from multiple institutes now recognizing uh, the importance of this um, also some writing groups either for perspectives or best practice guidelines uh, we do have a, a manuscript in draft from uh, the, the June meeting, uh, and uh, we've distributed the tables and the figure from that. We thought that would be sort of the most useful rather than, than having the whole text, which is, is probably going to change uh, somewhat. Um, we could also uh, develop some planning groups for workshops or conferences, and, and again, as, as Jeff said, we're looking for kind of a loose or maybe a tighter, but a loose confederation or consortium for collaborative studies, and that's really the main thing here. Uh, guidelines is, it tends to be kind of a difficult word to some folks, so maybe we'll just call them best practices uh, that we can opine on. And and then let others decide what, uh, what guidelines should be. Um, as, as Jeff mentioned, we had over 20 centers at varying stages of implementation in June, supported through multiple NIH, but primarily institutional mechanisms. Um, there were, uh, it seemed to us, numerous similar and overlapping efforts that uh, really would benefit from collaboration and a lot of shared needs that, that we're trying to address by the, these subsequent meetings. We felt that would benefit from uh, per periodic interactions and some degree of coordination, but we want to be sure that we facilitate uh, and, and unlike many government efforts, not, uh, not impede things. So, so our, our proposed goals were to identify research directions and priorities, uh, promote collaboration among existing groups, which is the focus of the meeting today, um, stimulate investigator-initiated efforts, and, and we can issue f funding solicitations, but as, as Eric said, um, things are a little bit grim this year, so we can't do 20 of them, um, and we don't even know if we can do one, but we're keeping our fingers crossed. Um, we'd like, uh, amongst our staff, both uh, NHGRI and NIH, to learn more about the genomic medicine centers that are out there and what, what y'all are doing. And, and, you know, if to, the, to the extent that you're nearby and we can drive or walk, uh, we, can, we can visit or find other ways to get out there. And then establish, as Eric described, a genomic medicine working group as a subcommittee of our council, which gives it a, sort of an official status. Um, it, it would have a rotating membership, very or will, um, much like many of our advisory groups, so that we, we get a continued uh, influx of, of folks who can give us advice. Uh, we'd need to have one <coughs> active council member and a report back to council regularly. Um, this group will identify topics for subsequent meetings. Um, they, we meet ab about once a month or so by phone. Uh, topics for separate working groups, monitor production of white papers, and maybe stimulate people to get things done as needed. Uh, and then also uh, sort of, you know, maybe break off and review progress in a given area for, for whether it's ready for, to be explored in subsequent groups. Uh, reviewing progress overall and identifying related efforts and integrate them as appropriate. And there are a number of them listed here. ClinVar is an, an NCBI database. You'll hear much more about that from Mark in a moment, uh, Emerge is an NHGRI <coughs> funded project, uh, which you'll probably be hearing about, and several of the Emerge PIs are, are here today. Uh, clinical Sequencing Exploratory Program is a new project that, uh, that Brad Osenberger, sitting in the corner there next to Mark, uh, is leading and that will be uh, initiated uh, within the next month or so, Brad, is that right? Tomorrow, even. Oh, yes, come back for that meeting. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, a trans-NIH uh, dissemination network that, again, you'll hear about from Mark, and obviously the Clinical Translational Science Awards uh, or something else that's, uh, that's quite relevant. So, um, so we had the Databases and Actionable Variants uh, uh, working group on December 1st and 2nd, just this last week. Uh, this meeting is uh, uh, on collaborative demonstration projects. We're anticipating that the May meeting will focus on standardization, quality control of clinical genomic testing and reporting. So how does one get these results? Um, that, that was what was proposed, and that seems to be sort of the, the thing on the horizon. But the, the outcome of today and tomorrow may be that we change the idea for this. And I know Dan is a flexible guy, and so that shouldn't be a problem um, if we decide that there's something else or in addition that we want to focus on. Um, we are hoping to have another meeting in September, um, not decided yet where, but hopefully on the West Coast to, in sort of fairness to kind of move this across the country. Uh, that could be on evidence development. We've heard that there's a, 
a lot of need for evidence on what you can actually take action on, and that might be an appropriate thing for that September meeting to do. Again, we, we'd like to uh, sort of have some input on that. <clears throat> um, there are additional needs for evidence development for the effectiveness of this. So does it actually make a difference in patient care? Uh, there are tools that are needed, uh, clinical decision support, clinical algorithms, uh, both for, for treating, but also for phenotype assessment and, and other aspects. There are policy needs that uh, may be uh, substantial as time goes by, uh, education, training, user support, sort of the usual sorts of things. Um, we don't want to have so many meetings, though. This is a Larson cartoon. Oh, man, the coffee's cold. They thought of everything. Uh, and, and so, you know, we don't wanted to get you guys uh, just doing nothing but coming to meetings. So, so again, a, a, you know, appropriate balance of timing and, and intensity and attendance would be, would be helpful to get advice on. Um, and then you've already heard sort of about the, uh, the goals of, of this meeting. You'll be hearing a little bit later about where we're going to break out into. There, there are various uh, rooms uh, uh, around here. Um, and uh, uh, the purpose, really, of the sessions before that is to introduce to you projects that are open to collaboration, that are interested in, in perhaps having um, some broader reach. So, so after hearing those presentations, then we, we may sort of take a show of hands of folks who are, who are interested in going to those groups so we know which rooms to assign you to just for in terms of size in that. Um, and I think that's pretty much all I had. So, uh, Mark, I think you're the next. If, any questions? Any questions for me? No? 